today we're going to take a look at a lung and heart meridian yin practice. The only props you might need would be a blanket. Um, if you don't have a blanket, then you can take a couple of bath towels and roll them up or a thick beach towel and roll it up so it has a little bit of a curve to it. We'll use that a little bit later, so we can put that off to the side. Um, if you have any knee issues, you can always take that blanket or towel and place it under the knees because sometimes these poses that we hold for a very long time can be a little bit uncomfortable on the knees and the tops of the feet. So you can make double use of that blanket or towel. We're going to come into a twisted child's pose to start with. So go ahead and take the big toes together, knees as wide apart as possible. Walk your hands out in front. Take a couple of breaths here. If you tend to have a lot of cramping in your feet, you can take a, a bath towel or a small hand towel and roll it up right underneath the ankle joint. And that'll give you a little bit of a support there so it doesn't feel as compressive. We are gonna start going to the left. So walk your hands way over to the left. Tuck that right arm underneath, come down on the side of the head. Your bum is gonna lift up a little bit, that's okay. Take some nice deep breaths. Get adjusted for the first few breaths. Remembering that yin is a very introspective, long hold practice in which we look to get deeper into the connective tissue, into those cold parts of the body. We think of muscles as being a more yang, warm, part of the body, but connective tissue and fascia is very cold and immovable, and we don't look to in yin to try to stretch it because you really can't stretch connective tissue all that much, but we do hope to make it more pliable and a little more mobile. Start to breathe into the back side of the body. So every pose in which you are face down or twisted, it becomes difficult to breathe into the front side. And this is a great time to practice breathing into the back side of the body. Our lungs are a 360 degree thing. So we wanna breathe into that space right where the kidneys are at, right above the waistline. And then into the center of the back for a three-part breath, and then all the way up to the space around the shoulders, shoulder blades, and exhale, shoulder blades, center of back, kidney space. In yin, once you get into the pose, what you want to do is sort of hang out there, steady, don't try to fidget too much. And sometimes we find when we're in the pose for a little while, a lot of issues come up. So there is some research out there that shows that connective tissue has what we call memory, emotional memory. And so if you find yourself getting upset in a yin posture, that is really not outside the realm of possibility. What you just want to do is you just want to kind of stay in the pose and take some deep breaths. Recognizing that we will not be in this pose forever that this too shall pass. And just three more deep breaths. Generally, yin postures are held anywhere from two to five minutes. If you're just starting out, 
You're going to probably want to hold them one to two minutes to start. So walk that left hand back into the side of the face. Slowly pull yourself out. So in the end, you want to pull yourself out of these poses really, really slowly, being respectful of how your body is feeling. You're going to rock a little bit forward, inch each knee in a little bit for wide knees, child's pose. Walk your hands out, forehead to the floor. You can take your hands on top of each other, forehead on the top. And come back up and walk ourselves to the other side here. So walk your hands way over, take those knees a little wider, way over to the right. Take that left hand underneath, side of the head down, feet to the floor, relax that right hand. Get yourself settled for the first few breaths. I'm going to come back to that breath in the back side of the body. deep breaths. Walk that right hand alongside the head. Lift all the way up. Move nice and slow. Take, oh my goodness, those knees back in a little bit. Walk yourself out into a child's pose. take what's called quarter dog. So you're going to keep your knees a little bit closer together, shift those feet back so that you have your hips directly above your knees as if you're doing cat cow. Okay? You're going to shift your weight forward a little bit, walk your hands out, take the right arm across in front of you, your forehead to the arm, left arm can just rest here. So like Anahatasana, a hard opening pose, it's sort of a half version of it. And look back and make sure that your knees are right below your hips. Let your heart sink forward.
you find that you want to go a little deeper or feel more comfortable going deeper, you just drop the chest a little bit more. Feel the gravity pulling the belly and the chest down toward the floor. Start to walk that left hand back up. Press back to all fours. Maybe take a cat cow here a couple of times. Just to reorient. And then walking the hands back out, you're going to cross that left in front of you, forehead to the forearm. Right arm relaxes on the floor. Start to walk that right hand back in, press all the way back to all fours, a little cat cow here again. Go ahead and come back into your seat here. If you had your blanket or towel out on the floor, you won't need it for this next one flat but you will need it rolled up so take your blanket roll it up i like to pat my blanket down to make sure it's 100 percent secure there okay take your right side body you're going to tuck that right arm underneath you have the shoulder resting on the floor so the back side of the shoulder side of the head to the floor you can stack your feet on top of each other or drop them down wherever feels comfortable but take that left arm up and reach up as high as you can and up and over. Drop the palm. If this is not comfortable, you can always take a slightly different version, which is arms up above, but I tend to not like to squish my neck like that. So reach out a little bit further. Take some nice deep breaths. Get settled in your posture how you best feel. We're going to relax the muscles, soften all that strength purpose in, and become more yin-like, a little more self-observant, self-aware. Again, remembering that sometimes yin yoga brings up some unique emotions. So 
believe it's better out than in all the time. So better to let go of some of those emotions during a yin practice than for them to explode out some other way. So the heart and lung radiance run through your hands and through the inside of your arms, through the armpit and down into the lung and heart meridian area, right into the chest. So what we're doing, we're just stretching the inside of the arm, the outside of the pinky and thumb, getting into that side body. And the idea behind yin is that oftentimes meridians in Chinese medicine are stuck or not balanced or something is not working as cleanly as it could. And so the idea is to stimulate those meridians and help clear the lines so that energy runs unimpeded, undisturbed, in a balanced way throughout your entire body. Go ahead and start to walk that left arm in, take it back alongside behind the shoulder. Nice deep breath here. Wiggle your fingers out a little bit. And then go ahead and press up. Now you can go ahead and just turn to the other side. I'm actually going to switch directions so I'm still facing you. Left hip. Left arm goes down. We're rolling to the very back side of the shoulder as much as possible. Find your foot position here. Right arm reaches way up. Oof. Way up and over. Not quite right for me there. This is where you kind of adjust. Kind of reach your point. Reach out to the middle. Start to feel that stretch in the side body. Feel the energy running from your fingertips all the way down the inside of your arm to underarm, down into the chest. Helping clear the hung and lung and heart meridians. Trying to abbreviate it and shorten it is just And start to walk that right hand in, take it along the side of the hip, wiggle the fingers a little bit, take a breath here, and press yourself all the way up, you can take that blanket off to the side, and come onto your back, take a nice reclining twist here. So take your arms out to the side, palms up. You're gonna shift your hips a little bit over to the right, bring your knees in to the chest. Drop those knees over to the left. So you can look straight up at the ceiling or you can turn your head and look over your right shoulder. lung heart meridian you can bend that right elbow take it up a little over the head that's once again going to get into the arm the inside of the arm the underarm back into the chest
I'm going to let go, try to force those knees down toward the floor and just allow gravity to take them wherever they're going to go. to turn your head back to center. Engage the core, lift those knees all the way back up to the middle. Shift the hips over to the left. Bring the knees into the chest, drop the knees over to the right. This is usually where my back pops into place. You can turn and look over the left fingertips or straight up at the ceiling. Once again, you can bend that left elbow, open up a little bit more of that heart-lung meridian. Allow gravity to take your knees down to the floor just by weight. Close your eyes and just start to breathe into the side body. Turn your head back to center, engage your core, and come back through center. Shift the hips right down the middle. Take the arms up overhead, feet out in a starfish shape. Take five deep breaths here. how you feel, noticing how each part of your body feels, and then keeping your left foot way over there to the left, you're going to walk your right heel over to the left. You can stay here with your feet side by side, or you can cross your right ankle over your left ankle a little bit more, so keep both hips on the floor. You can stay with the arms up overhead just like this, or if you want a little bit more, you can start to inch your upper body over a little bit. This is banana pose, one of my favorite poses. You can grab hold of that right wrist with that left hand and pull a little bit more so you get more of that banana style shape. Turn and look over your left shoulder or right shoulder. We're not gonna be here a really long time, but just feel the stretch in the side body. At any point in time you feel really uncomfortable hanging on to the wrist or something doesn't quite feel right, you can always unwind and go back a step. I go with whatever sensation is working for me on that day.
Go ahead and release that right wrist. Take the arms back out into your starfish shape. Unwind the legs, move the back back to center. Starfish for three breaths. Notice how your right side feels versus your left side. Kind of checking out the differences from left to right, all the way from the ankle or the bottom of the foot, all the way through the fingertips on the right side. And then start to walk that left foot over toward the right, either heel to heel or cross that left ankle over the right. Start to move your upper body over a little bit Keep both hips firmly on the floor though. So you want your banana to have a nice rounded shape. Take your left arm up overhead. Grab hold of that left wrist with that right hand. Pull a little bit so you have your stem. You can turn and look to the left or right. And if you're new to yin, and this all seems very strange, you're wondering what exactly you're getting out of this and why is it different. What you're trying to do is not engage the muscles, but just sort of use traction, just as if you had a broken leg and they were tractioning it out or tractioning out something to help it straighten out and grow properly. Last deep breath here. This is sort of a shorter hold traction time. Bones are also considered yin material in your body. Release that left wrist. Take the arms back out into starfish. Walk that left foot over to the left. Back into your starfish shape. Three deep breaths. And you're probably wondering if you're new to yin, why you would want to traction your body out. There's a couple of different reasons. You want to maintain that connective tissue's health and yin looks to keep your connective tissue healthy, pliable, moved. It also gives you a little bit more flexibility and opening because of the pliability. So you can stay here. You can take your hands alongside your body for your shavasana. Let your toes fall out to the side, relax. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath and close your eyes. I have found that yin is very mentally and emotionally soothing. It's a lovely practice mm -hmm. to take on first thing in the morning or when your body is cold. You can do yin before you do a yang practice. So if you are a vinyasa student, or an Ashtanga student, it is nice to do a short yin yoga practice in front of your more active muscular practice. It's also fine to do yin just on your own. And I recommend doing yin at least once a week, preferably twice a week. We have a world we live in now where everything is so fast moving, so quick and demanding, that it is nice to slow down, take your time, Hold things, become mindful and aware of how your body's working, what's going on in your mind and emotions, and let things process through in a slow, thoughtful fashion. Now you can stay in Shavasana for as long as you need to if you are ready to move on, you can go ahead and slowly bend your knees and bring the feet flat to the floor. Take a few breaths. Roll to your right side for just a moment, setting your intention for your day. And then pressing up to whatever seated posture you like best. 
and is also fabulous right before you decide to meditate. It helps move the body, make your seat much more comfortable and flexible for meditation, for holding it longer. So a pre-meditation practice, I often do yin or some yin postures. Go ahead and take your hands, palms up or palms down onto your knees. Let those hands and wrists relax. And just take a few moments to check out your body, scanning it from head to toe, checking in with each part of your body. And even if you're in Shavasana still, take a moment to scan your body and notice any changes from the beginning of practice to the end. And not just your body, but your emotions, your mental guide. Maybe things have slowed down enough in your mind so that you can focus more deeply. On your next exhale, drop your fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, sweep your hands up overhead. Look up at your palms. Exhale, hands to heart. So namaste. Thank you for joining me for this yin practice. I hope you enjoyed it.